Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today we have a fun adventure planned. Yes, stay tuned, you'll see. It's gonna be fantastic. We start our exploration by stopping in Piazza Plebiscito and the Royal Palace. We then continue to Via Toledo and the Galleria and end up in Spacanapoli. Well, folks, this is uh, the heart of Naples, Piazza Plebiscito. Behind me, you can see the Royal Palace or Palazzo Reale. And this is the piazza that where all the major events in Naples happen. Uh, as you can see, there's a, they're waiting for a concert of some sort today. This is another important place in Naples. It's called Galleria Umberto I. It's a beautiful place for a stroll. It's a beautiful gallery. And just outside of this, there's this place, which is amazing for pastries. It's called Sfogliatella Mary. If you want a beautiful Naples-style pastry, still served warm, that's the place to go. Well, guys, this amazing thing is baba, Nutella, and pastry cream. Funny story about this dessert. Last year, we were walking here in Naples, and I could not have one because I have a gallbladder issue. But this year, I have no more gallbladder, so I'm going to have one. Nothing's going to stop me. I know, one's for Rick. And let's try, ooh, oops. That's for the pigeons. Oh my God. Whoa. Whoa. That's so good. Oh. Mm. Our first stop in Spacca Napoli is the Church of Santa Chiara. Well, folks, this is a very, very famous street. It's called Spacanapoli in uh, di local dialect and means cut Naples in half. And the reason is, is because it's a very straight road that goes from one side to the other of the city in a straight line. Well, folks, behind me is the famous church of Santa Chiara and the monastery. This place is an absolute gem in Naples. Uh, if you have time, go for a visit. It's absolutely beautiful. Inside is a, this cloister completely covered in hand-painted uh, tiles. It's something really, really worth seeing. So if you have time, come here and go to see Santa Chiara. We then walk to Cappella San Severo to see the famous statues of Cristo Velato. Unfortunately, it's closed. We then walk to Vili Tribunali. And we found this incredible violin maker working in a window. After all the jacks are in the boxes, and the clowns have all gone to bed. You can hear happiness staggering on down the street. Foot dressed in red. And this is Via dei Tribunali. This means in the Italian uh, street of the courthouses. And this street is famous for many, many, many pizza places. And most of the most famous pizza places are down the street, so come and take a look. And here we have some gelato. We eat this delicious stuff either before a pizza or after a pizza. Yes, folks, you can have gelato before a pizza or after a pizza. <laughs> As you can see, this is another institution in Naples. So Bilo Pizza is here since 1935 and has many locations, but it started here in Via Tribunale. And you might have noticed this area is slightly chaotic, but that's the charm of the place. So folks, as you know, in our show, we usually introduce a little superstition in every city, and this is in Naples. As you can see, the statue is bronze, and the nose is very shiny, and the rest of the statue, not so much, because if you rub the nose, it's good luck. And look how many times the nose has been rubbed thousands and thousands of times. So let's hope for good luck. Well, Naples is a very ancient city 
It started with the Greek and then the Romans and then modern times. One thing that they left about the city, every civilization, is a layer. And here you can actually go underneath the city of Naples and see all the layers of the city from the Greek time to the Roman time to the modern time. This is the Napoli Sotterranea or underground Naples and there you can you see this amazing um, aqueducts built by the Greeks 500 years before the Romans and then they've been used in, during World War II as a bomb shelter. It's actually something really fun to do unless you are claustrophobic. In that case, I do not recommend it. Well, folks, this is another tour. It's a very interesting tour. It's not Napoli underground, but it's the um, bird city of Naples. So you can see an actual shopping mall underneath the city of Naples, and it's still quite a bit well preserved. So it's very, very interesting. Totally different experience from the other one. Not claustrophobic at all. Let's go take a look. So here you see the remaining of the Roman city of Naples. This city was covered in 540 by mud from a landslide of the nearby mountains. So that's why it's completely preserved intact as it is. This is an ancient road, or Roman road, and as you can see, it's perfectly intact. And this white piece of uh, stone is actually slightly reflective, so you can actually see the road even during the night. And here was a shop where the people take their clothes to be dyed in different colors. Well, folks, as you might have noticed by now, this was an ancient Roman city mall. We had the bank. You had the laundry, you had the restaurant, you had the dye place, so people come here for shopping. This was a fish store. This is uh, one of the bench where they used to cut the fish and gun it, and it's slightly in a slant, so all the, the, the juices from the fish was running off. And this one was flat, where people can cut the fish and uh, prepare it. And this that looks like a staircase was just a place where you display the fish for the clients to pick up the fish they want, they want, to, they want to buy. As you can see, all the, all the bricks here are this funny shape, um, like a diamond shape. And the reason why is apparently the Romans figured out that this shape was able to dissipate the energy during an earthquake. So this building was seismic proof. So this was the Roman fish market. It was actually quite big, don't you think? And look at this, we can put all the fish here and display and people can find the, the cut of fish they want to buy. In the same area of the underground city, you'll find the, this street, which is very, very famous in Naples. It's called San Gregorio degli Armeni. And this city is famous for the nativity scene. We have the build figurine that people at Christmas use for the nativity scene, and they do this year round. It's incredibly ornate and fun. Let's go take a look. And for nativity scene, they not only use people you would find the nativity scene like Virgin Mary or Jesus Christ, but they also make replica of famous people like the Queen or, or you can see here Lucio Dalla or Elvis Presley or Donald Trump. And of course last year we had Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Well, we're here in Naples at a beautiful fish shop, and uh, apparently, I'm going to try the Tortuco del Mare. It's the truffle of the ocean, and uh, apparently, you just put a little lemon on it, and, and they uh, still move when you put that. And apparently, it's still moving. How weird! This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. It's still alive. I'm going to eat a live. What is it? A live fish? No, not a fish. A live Mollusk mussel. mussel. I'm going to eat a live mussel, folks. I've never eaten a live mussel before. Look, it moves. Look at this. Allora, come si mangia? Così. 
Cheers. Chin chin. And now we are going to the Mercato di Pigna Secca, which is this area of, Mar of Naples, where you have lots of food markets and uh, vendors. Well, folks, if you want one way to get people into your restaurant, just offer a one euro Aperol spritz like the one behind me. And by the way, guys, in Italy, you can take your booze to go. It's an Aperol spritz to go. Time to walk back to the hotel for a little rest before dinner at Brandi Pizzeria. Well guys, we are in front of Pizzeria Brandi. This is an institution in Naples. They invented Pizza Margherita here in, or, in honor of Queen Margherita in 1889. So that's what we're gonna have dinner tonight. Follow us. This is very important, but in Italy, you do not share pizza. Pizza is not for sharing. You order your own pizza, you eat your own pizza. End of story. It's not true. Lots of people share pizzas in Italy. No, they just don't Italian. Talk about it. They just don't talk about it. Actually, lots of Italians. I have personally seen 90-year-old plus couples sharing pizza without any problem here in Italy. Italian do not share a pizza. You know what it is? I like to eat what's on my plate. And if I have this giant pizza, then I feel like I'm forced to eat the entire thing. 